Get ready to ride. Riding is fun. Everyone knows that. It's great to ride your bike just for fun around the neighborhood, on a greenway, or on a trail at the park. But there are lots of other reasons why riding a bike is a great idea. Can you think of some? It's good for me. That's right. It's good for your heart and muscles and makes you stronger. Gets you where you want to go. Correct. Biking is a great form of transportation. It's faster than walking, and for short distances, it can even be easier than taking a car. It's good for the environment. Absolutely. Riding a bike produces no pollution. It gives me freedom. So true. Riding a bike is a great way to learn the rules of the road, so you'll be ready when you learn to drive a car. So now we have all these good reasons to ride our bicycles. What's the first thing we should do before we ride? Ask an adult! Hey Grandma, can we ride our bikes instead of taking the car? Hey Tito, can we ride our bikes to the new Nature Research Center? Mom, can Brandon and I ride our bikes to the new Science Museum? Sure. Hey Dad, can we go ride our bikes to the new Nature Center? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Talk to an adult about where you want to go by bicycle. Around the neighborhood, to visit a friend, to school, the park, or to the cool Nature Research Center. Your parents, or adults in charge, will decide if they need to go with you or give you permission to go by yourself. In Let's Go Biking, you're going to learn how to control your bicycle while thinking about traffic. You'll learn how to interact safely with traffic. You should practice these biking skills with an adult on driveways, sidewalks, or greenway trails until you can do them really well. Then when you have confidence in your skills, talk with your parents about whether you're ready to ride in the street. It is up to your parents to help you decide where you should ride. So you have permission to ride your bike somewhere. What's your next step? Plan a safe route! Think about the best way to get where you are going. Look at maps. Choose a route away from busy roads. Is there a greenway that you can use? If you're going to ride your bicycle to some place often, like school or the library, plan the route you will take with your parents and follow it. Even if you have permission to bicycle without an adult, practice riding any new route several times with a parent or older rider before doing it alone. Now you know where you're going. But before you go, you need a bicycle that is right for you. Have a bike that fits! I love your bike. Thanks. It's really important that you have a bicycle that fits you. And there are easy ways to check and see if your bike fits. If your bicycle has a diamond frame, you should be able to stand over the frame with one to three inches between you and the bike. If you have a step-through frame, adjust the seat up or down until you can sit comfortably. If you're just learning to ride a bicycle, both feet should be touching the ground when you sit on the seat. If you have more experience bicycling, set your seat so that when your foot is on the pedal in its lowest position, your leg is slightly bent. It's always okay to ask an adult to help you adjust your bicycle. So, what are the first three important things that you need to do before you ride your bike? See if you can remember them all. Before you ride your bike, you need to Ask an adult! Plan a safe route! Have a bike that fits! Now it's time to do the ABC Quick Check. A is for air. B is for brakes. C is for cranks, chains, and cogs. Quick is for quick release. You should do the ABC Quick Check every time you ride. First, A is for air. Make sure your tires have enough air in them. If it's full, it should bounce back. If it needs air, it will sink in. You can find the correct pressure written on the sidewall of the tire. Make sure your pump fits the valve on your tire, then pump it up until you reach the right pressure. Next, spin the wheels. Each wheel should spin freely without much wobbling. Look for broken or missing spokes and bulges or bald spots on the tire. My tires and wheels are ready to go. Next, B is for brakes. Make sure your brakes will stop your bicycle. If you have coaster brakes, you check them by spinning the back wheel and pushing the pedal backwards. The wheel should stop. If you have hand brakes, squeeze the levers. They should work smoothly and be able to stop your wheel when you push your bike forward. Make sure the levers don't hit the handlebars. Check that the pads are clean, straight, and touch the rims properly.
Brake pads that touch the tire can cause a blowout. Pads that go under the rim and contact the spokes can cause a crash. My brakes are working great. My brakes are ready to go. Then C is for cranks, chains, and cogs. Make sure your bicycle chain and gears are working smoothly. Grab the crank arms and try to wiggle them from side to side. There should be no movement. Make sure your chain isn't too loose or full of dirt. On a bike with hand brakes, spin the pedals and cranks backwards to see if the chain runs smoothly over the cogs. The chain should look like metal, not rust or black gunk. If your bike has more than one gear, shift between gears to make sure they work properly. My cranks and chain are all set. My gears are running smoothly. And last, quick is for quick release. Make sure any quick releases are tight and properly closed. You may have a quick release on the seat post or on the wheel. Our quick releases are tight. And that's the ABC Quick Check. Can you remember what each one stands for? Before you ride your bike, you need to check. A is for air. B is for brakes. C is for cranks, chains, and cogs. Quick is for quick release. You can learn how to make minor repairs to your bike by going online, checking out a good book from the library, or getting help from a parent or older friend. For major repairs, take your bicycle to a bike shop and have a mechanic fix it. Now your bike is ready to go. What about you? What is the most important thing you need to have before you ride your bike? A helmet! That's right! In North Carolina, it's the law. Anyone under the age of 16 must wear a helmet when riding a bicycle. Helmets are very important because they protect your head from injuries that can damage your brain. Choose a helmet that's the right size for you. It won't do its job if it doesn't fit. It should fit your head snugly but comfortably. Then you can pick out one that fits your personality. Adjust the helmet so it fits you just right. The helmet should sit level on your head and cover the top of your forehead with about two finger widths of space between your eyebrows and the front of the helmet. Fasten your helmet and adjust the straps to fit snug, but not tight, forming a V under each ear. The helmet shouldn't rock back and forth or from side to side. A helmet that's too loose could come off in a crash. Once a helmet has been in a crash, it's done its job. Even if you can't see any damage, it's time to replace it with a new one. You've got your helmet fitting just right. Now there's one last thing you need to do before you go biking. What can you do to make sure the drivers on the road see you? Be visible! You need to do everything you can to make sure drivers can see you. Bright colors, or light colors, help drivers see you. The sooner drivers can see you, the easier it is for them to react to you as another vehicle on the road. What about when it's getting dark? It's not a good idea to ride a bicycle under dim light conditions, such as early in the morning, at sunset, or when the skies are getting dark. If you must ride at night, North Carolina law requires you to have a headlight and tail light or rear reflector on your bicycle. You should also wear light colored clothing and lots of reflective material. Without something reflective, it can be very difficult for drivers to see you and very dangerous for you. Have you been doing the two most important things you can do to protect yourself when riding your bike? Protect yourself when riding your bike. Wear a helmet! Be visible! It's very important that you know the rules of the road while riding a bicycle. Do you know why? Because a bicycle is a vehicle! In North Carolina, the law defines a bicycle as a vehicle. That means you must follow the rules of a vehicle when you ride a bicycle on the road. Know the rules of the road. The first important rule is to Stop at the end of driveways. You stop to make sure the street is clear before going into the street. The number one crash kids have with cars happens when they don't stop at the end of the driveway. So stop every time to look for traffic and wait, if necessary, before you cross or enter a road. Then enter the road only when you are sure it's safe. The second important rule is to 
ride with traffic. You must ride your bicycle on the right side of the road with the traffic. Riding against the traffic is not only against the law, it is a leading cause of car bike crashes, especially at intersections. So always ride on the right. Vehicles are also required to stop for people crossing the street. And if you're on a bicycle, you're a what? A vehicle! So the third rule of the road is to Yield to pedestrians. You should stop to let pedestrians cross just like a motor vehicle should. If they are crossing at an intersection, you should stop. If they are on a sidewalk and you are riding on a driveway, you should stop, let them cross, then stop again at the driveway's edge to check for traffic. On a greenway trail or sidewalk, when you come upon a pedestrian from behind, slow down to pass and let them know you are coming up behind them. On your left! On your left! Another rule for vehicles that you'll need to follow is pull over for sirens. Whenever you hear a siren from an emergency vehicle, like ambulances, fire trucks, and police cars, you must pull off to the right side of the road and stop just like car drivers. Riding a bicycle on the sidewalk is not the safest place to ride. Why do you think that might be? Because a bicycle is a vehicle. Bicyclists who use the sidewalk can be hazardous to pedestrians who are not expecting them. And drivers are not expecting fast-moving bicycles on sidewalks at driveways and intersections. So once you have the skills to ride on the road, like a vehicle should, stay off the sidewalks. Did you already know the rules of the road? Have you been following them? Remember to set a good example when you bicycle with younger kids or your friends by following all the rules of the road. Stop at the end of driveways. Ride with traffic. Yield to pedestrians. Pull over for sirens. Once you're on the road, you're going to see lots of traffic signs and signals. Traffic signs and signals direct motorists, bicyclists, and pedestrians by telling them when it's their turn and by alerting them to possible situations up ahead. So you need to... Know the traffic signs and signals! If you know the basic traffic signs and signals, you'll be able to do the right thing when you see them and safely share the road with others. Let's see whether you know the right thing to do when you see each of these signs or signals. Let's start with an easy one, a stop sign. What should you do when you approach a stop sign? I come to a complete stop. Look for traffic, wait for any crossing traffic or pedestrians, then move carefully through the intersection. Okay, here's another one. What should you do when you approach a yield sign? I slow down, check for traffic, wait for any crossing traffic or pedestrians, then move carefully through the intersection. What should you do when you see a one-way sign? I only ride in the direction of the one-way arrow and not the other way. A do not enter sign? I never ride into a street with a do not enter sign. I find another way to get where I'm going. A railroad crossing sign? I slow down, look, and listen for a train. Okay, it looks good over there. All right, let's go. Busier intersections may use signals rather than signs. What should you do when you approach a traffic signal? If the light is red, I come to a complete stop. 
and wait for the light to turn green before I go. If the light is yellow, I know that the light is about to turn red, so I slow down and stop if I haven't entered the intersection. If the light is green, I go through the intersection with caution and keep looking for traffic. Some intersections have flashing traffic signals. What should you do when you approach a flashing traffic signal? If the flashing light is red, I come to a complete stop. Look for traffic, wait for any crossing traffic or pedestrians, then move carefully through the intersection, just like a stop sign. If the flashing light is yellow, I slow down and check for traffic before going through the intersection with caution, just like a yield sign. Looks like you might be ready to ride. Your next step is to learn the bicycling basics and practice what you learn. Have fun. Be safe and let's, let's go, go biking. biking. Let's get going. I can't wait to see the Nature Research Center. Bye, Mom. Brandon and I are heading out. Come on, Dad, let's go. Grandma, we're ready. Let's go.